space trade just, just yet. yet. Sit down and strap in for the ultimate super coach podcast. It's time to win your leagues and dominate your mates. This is the Jewel Position Podcast, hosted by Whisperer and Adriana Soros. Oh, 2RF, it's going to be a big, big podcast. We're going to leave a lot of people out, unfortunately. There's only so many people that we can cover. You are listening to the Dual Position Podcast. I am the SC Whisperer, joined by your favorite super coaches, favorite super coacher, the man of the hour, SC Adrianosaurus. My friend, this one is going to be big. People are going to... I'm assuming we're going to get a lot of messages being like, oh, you didn't talk about X player, you didn't talk about Y player. But we've got seven yep. options to pick in, you know... Front row on It'd into, be three into hours our, if yeah. we did all of them, wouldn't it? So it would be. that's not very good for viewing. I, I did my one for my podcast and I just got mail from everyone going, oh, look, you poo-pooed Blah and he did my team. I'm like, that's okay, mate. That's what Supercoach hey, is I, all I about. I poo-poo half the players and they end up in my team. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> oh, Some of those ones I poo-poo end up in my team too. So, <laughs> you know, come on, guys, cut us some slack. We're just like you, except we podcast. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we are doing 2RF, as I said today. Headlines by, you know, a few, few big names, a couple of strategies in the works about sort of what you're going to pick, whether you're going to go two guns and a midi or, you know, the emergence of Jermaine Hopgood, who we'll talk about today. Uh, but a bit of housekeeping out of the way. We are sponsored by Bet with Joel, Australia's best and most trusted sports investing platform. Our group code for the Dual Position podcast is 988, sorry, 988813. Prize is undecided yet. We, you know, this one's going to be exclusive to the podcast listeners, YouTube watchers. We're not going to announce that one. But, you know, my individual league, I'll let Ado plug his individual league as well for his prizes. But my individual SC Whisperer League, uh, the guys at Bet with Joel have put up a monster, nearly $4,000. First prize overall, probably the biggest in the space. So definitely go check that out. The code for that one is 161930. Uh, some mammoth prizes. So that's, you know, the podcast, that's mine. Uh, Ado, feel free to give your individual group code a plug and prizes that you're going to be doing. Uh, well, I'm not as rich as you, mate, uh, in the old um, sponsorship department. So mine's a hunji. If you're the top uh, finisher, hunj, hunjo, yeah, that's a free hunji. Oh, it's cash. To, to, is- to be fair, I'm not giving out 4K cash. So, you know, cash in the, po- cash in the pocket's better than no cash at all. That's right. It's a hundred bucks in cash um, from me to you. Um, and I'll give you one of my, I've printed out a whole bunch of SC by uh, Adrianosaurus, my uh, logo on a polo. So you just got to give me your size and I'll send you out one. You can rock the old super coach by Adrianosaurus shirt out. And everyone's like, Oh, I hate that guy. Jeez. Even, even I don't have one of those, mate. Oh, I'd love to send you one if you like. It's pretty good. What, um, what code? I've got, what, I've got a whole big bag of those. Uh, what, code sizes. what code are we rocking? What um, code are we rocking? So yeah, one? I should give my code, shouldn't I? Um, Adrianosaurus. 508684. Jump in, get yourself in there for a hunji. And look, it's a um it's a not a common thing that people are gonna be rocking around. There's only about three people wearing an Adrianosaurus polo, so it's it's priceless. I reckon if you wore that on a night out, you've got like a, a 17% increased chance of picking up. So <laughs> definitely worth getting oh, in. Try it um, out, eh? But yeah, housekeeping out of the way. Bet with Joel Stray's most trusted and uh, yeah, dedicated sports investing platform. For all information on packages, check the description of the YouTube or the podcast. You know, some really good discount codes there. But out of the way. Uh, look, the NR- NRL Roast released his top or the, the fan voted top 100 most attractive players. And I think it is absolute travesty, absolute disgraceful that Cam Murray did not win it. He's number one to RF in my heart. Uh, you know, he's the best looking bloke in the league in my heart. He comes in at 749K. Ado, what's the like, what's the not like about old Cam Murray, apart from him being an absolute 10? And I assume a staple in your missus, best looking super coach team. Absolutely, she's in there. Oh, look, I reckon a little smoky, and I think he's way too low on the list, is Joe Tappany. Very <laughs> handsome man. Um, Anyway, but Cam Murray is certainly, oh, he's, I mean, who won it? Nico? And Nico won it. Look, I'm not against Nico winning it, but I just think Cam Murray, mate, like he's just a, I mean, just a star. Whenever Cam Murray, you see a close up of him, you just, you, you get mesmerized in his eyes. <laughs> That's why he's in um, my anyway, team. Anyway, <laughs> look, he is 749,200. He's really expensive. His ownership is 23.2. So, that's um you know that he he's a hundred getter at times he he could hurt you I reckon um if you don't own him and and people are obviously going there I think because Gus is out um I had Gus in my team because I thought that he was at a really for a premium he was at a really good price Cam Murray is going to cost you a fair bit so um 
I look, I've got him in my team currently. He's averaging 2022 with 71, and that's why 23.2% of people have got him. I'm projecting him this year for another 71. I think it's 71.5. That's if he gets 65 minutes. Last year, um, he was injury affected a lot, and he still pumped out a 71. That's yeah. that's how good the bloke is. Um, because we know he was affected by injury. If he's healthy this year, I'm just I'm done, I'm doing 71.5 as a low ball. I'm low balling him. I reason he could finish mid mid 70s if he gets 70 minutes this year, because that's 1.1 as his career PPM. Um, the buys are in round 60, around 20, around 26. That's really good if you're gonna start the year with him because no early buys to deal with, and you've got an absolute gun in your team. Um, early doors, which is really important. Obviously, round 20, you're going to have to probably move him on. Isn't that going to be too much money around in round 26 when you need him? 16, 20, and 26, that's a lot of outs, isn't it? Um, so you might have to rethink your strategy on whether you carry him at that time. Um, look in draft. That's all I said. He'll be he'll probably be in the top 15 picks because he's a stud. Anyone who averages 70 plus, um, those are guys that always... Um, Cons- consistently early too. It's not. It's not a one twenty and then a thirty. It's a. It's a consistent seventy. Yep, that's right. So I mean, people are going to go these ceiling blokes, but he's one of the rare second row forwards. If he gets a try, it's a hundred. Um. So look, he's a stud, and I. If I look and everyone, some of the people grab Hines or they grab the fullbacks, and there's nothing else there. You know, Murray and IPAP, or I just grab one of them because I know they're so consistent. Um. Look, he's pros. He he and IPAP were the top of the pops. Um, when it comes to second row forward, IPAP is um, pretty expensive. We've hardly given him a mention. Um, but look, I think injury free for Murray going into 2023, 65 to 70 um, minutes at 1.1. Thanks very much. He'll average 70 plus. You'll never have to look at him again. And he's got no early buys. The cons for me is that he, he he's had a busy schedule because he was off at the um, World Cup. He is going to go into origin as well. He's the captain. He plays big minutes. So I would be a little bit worried about him around origin time, but that's a problem for later, isn't it? Um, and like I said, you probably, in round 26, when we go into head-to-head, when, when is the finals? When, when does that start? Uh, yeah, so he'll be out grand final. So grand final for head-to-head is 26. Yeah, you can't so. have him for your grand final and missing it. So you will have to move him, but you've got him for most of the year, haven't you? So, I mean, tick, 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 no Gus. Um, I reckon he's him and, and IPAP, if you're going to treat yourself in the second row forward. Yeah, I think he's a very, very easy carry until round 13 or whenever Origin is. Um, yep. no, no interruption for the first three months. And then, look, similar to Payne Haas that we discussed on the Front Row Forward podcast, uh, I think Cam Murray's stocks for Supercoach are kind of dead after round 13. Um, you know, round 16 by, round 20 by, round 26. Really, really crucial rounds. Um, if you're a head-to-head guy and, you know, you're scraping to make the top four, the top six, or however, you, however your league set up, Murray missing round 20 is pretty crucial for you to build some momentum. Um, you know, he will be out with Origin through the mid part of the year, but I'm not really looking at that. You know, he's in my team, consistent guy. 749, yeah, it's pricey, uh, but he's average at 71. I don't see us losing money on that in the first three months. You know, we've got uh, Harm Sale out. We've got Saliva Havili out. I, I think minutes were never the concern with Murray, but I think, you know, with guys like Shaq Mitchell and David Mowali on the bench, Jason Demetrio is going to be looking for him to be playing big minutes. So I expect Murray to just plot around 70 and... You know, if I can get him, uh, you know, come round 13 when I look to sell him, and if I can sell him for, for 749, I'm going to take that as a win. Like, we haven't lost any money on a keeper. Uh, a lot he of these. He his value really well. He's one of those players that never, ever dips. It might be 20 or 30, but he, then he goes back up. He never loses. Well, that's that's the, the thing. A lot of these keepers, Nico Hines, uh, Nathan Cleary, James Tedesco, we're buying them with the expectation they're going to lose money. And that's fine because we're going to hold them. But if you can buy a keeper in Cam Murray and he holds his value until round 13, then, you know, fantastic. He's in my team as well. Uh, I'm not really too fussed. We'll be definitely looking at him in the charity shield today, but uh, I'm not really going to be moving off him unless someone like a Dave Fafita comes out and kills it. Who is the next player on the list? 689K, 19.1% ownership. Him and Cam Murray, you know, Cam Murray's 23.2. Is that antipod territory for you or do you still think 23% is fine? Oh, I just think for the quality of who he is, when you have these real quality ones like Cam Murray, I reckon 30 plus feels like where they sit. So I'm happy enough with 23.2. That's 70% of the game, basically, that's getting hurt if he goes over for a try and scores 100. Um, You know, and they've got somebody in there who they're hoping scores 60 in a game, but we've got a Murray who he'll do that 
yeah. you know, easily. So, uh, look, I think his ownership is is probably where I'd expect it, maybe even a little lower. Well, for 50k less, you can get David Fafita, who is 19.1%. I assume a lot of people that don't have Murray have Fafita. I know there are teams out there, and you and I have been... Uh, looking into the idea of running for Fida and Murray. Um, so we'd be one of the few. I would say maybe half a percent to one percent would own both of them collectively. Um, yeah. But I, assume... well, I do I do own them both yeah. currently. Yeah. I, I want to get a look at Dave, but I've got them both currently. Well, that's the thing. Look, last year, you know, shocking year. David Fida, he's terrible. He's a bust. He, he's, he's wasted. You know, he does nothing. He, he averaged 66. Like... <laughs> He's, he's still he's still average very well. You can look like dog well. shit and, and score 66. Yeah. So that's that's the appeal for Fafita. Look, he, he did score 35 in the trial last week uh, against the Broncos, I want to say. Um, this year, I or you did these notes for me. Thank you very much because I was flat out. You project him, hit him at a 70, uh, which is about a 1 ppm uh, at 70 minutes, which 1, one ppm David Fafita could do in his sleep. Yeah. You know, I mean, in his, in, his good year, in his great year with all the tries, it was 1.2. So I've tried to go, con- if conservatively he gets a 1, it's, he's got to be getting 70 minutes this year, hasn't he? That's yeah. that's the thing. It's the minutes because he we know he's had bench and stuff. Is he going to get 70 minutes? Just a bit of insight. Uh, we are recording this at 2 o'clock on Saturday just before the trials. So definitely one to watch to see how he goes with Kieran Foran. The Titans did put up an Instagram video. Uh, Foran was looking like he was swinging both sides. It's much, much easier to do that in training, I understand. So the dynamic between him, Tanner Boyd, and Fafita, something to definitely watch out for that we'll be watching in the trial. Uh, the pros, you know, contract year, it's it's just a proven thing that, you know, his, his value is going to go up. Um, and, and Kieran Foran and Tanner Boyd, they should work in his favor. You know, last week, I'm happy to not put the red line through him, but it's definitely just make note that it was probably their first hit out with Tanner Boyd in the game. Uh, he still looked okay, had a couple of offloads, had some good runs. But uh, I think one of the commentators made a really good point that the under-12 style of footy that David Fafita excels at doesn't work anymore. You can't just run over the top of blokes. I think teams are smart enough now to double and triple team him. So he's going to have to evolve into a really good line runner. Um, and obviously, yeah, I wouldn't say so much early ball anymore because teams just swarm him, but he needs to be able to be a little bit more creative with how he runs his lines. Um, so that's something that we need to to work for. The cons. Um, Stags and Fafita will fight it out for the... Oh, right. So, that's <laughs> I a was, bit, it's a bit of na- I, a bit of I was like, where do Stags come into this? Stags and Fafita will fight it out for the laziest player award. Trial one did not excite me, nor did it excite me, Ado. Um, have the Titans evolved their horrible play style? I, I think the thing with the Titans, and there's this narrative that they suck, and they do, but they suck defensively. Um, offensively, they can still put up points with, you know, seventh, the seventh best team in the league. Um, but all eyes will be on for Fafita. You, we know the cons. We know the pros. Uh, it's just a case of, are you a gambling man or not? Do you want to go with the upside? Because he has the most upside out of any 2RF. You know, I include Jeremiah Nenai in that. Fafita yeah. on his day is just unstoppable. But the emergence of Bo Firma as a safe set of hands, it just sort of leaves it, you know, unsure. Um, uh, is Justin Holbrook going to want to have Kieran Foran with the ball in his hands more and Foran's playing on the left? That's why I said before, uh, the idea of Foran swinging across both sides is exciting for Fafita owners. Um, but this trial will be definitely telling and I would love to note his uh, ownership. So at the moment, it's 19.1% and that's at 2 o'clock on uh, Saturday. Be very, it's very swing one way or the other. It's going to be 15 or it's going to be 25. I think it's going to go 6% either way and we'll definitely be, uh, be keen to see it. Um, Jeremiah and then I just signed a new contract. I made a joke on Twitter that, you oh, know, I never saw your joke. Oh, I, I was just like, look, oh, Jeremiah man, and I have a bit of sense of humor. <laughs> God, Jeremiah and I has signed a fat contract. Well done to him, but he is not going to be in my super coach considerations till 27 to 2027. And boy, how did that, uh, go down like a lead balloon? <laughs> oh mate. I say Ponga's made a glass and you know, Munster's back on the beer, so don't touch him. And that's funny. Uh, and that's funny. And everyone laughs at that. But the minute stuff, you, you, yeah. We're just saying he's, he's secured the bag. And Good on him. 19, he won't jump those bombs old. now this year. He's already got the cash. 19 year old secures a fat bag. Well done to him. He'll, his kids will never have to work. His kids' kids will never have to work. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm keen to see how he goes for Civic Coach this year because he had a breakout season last year. I think one of the. Um, reasons I had really good success in overall was, you know, there was a Lukey versus Nenai debate. I think Lukey was uh, the higher owner of the two and I decided to go with Nenai and obviously paid out. This year, you couldn't pay me enough to touch him. I'm just, I'm not keen. I'm just, I'm very fearful of that second season syndrome. Yeah, there's some players that you can kind of go, will will it be a second year syndrome? I'm on the fence with him. I don't know. Uh, because, 
Uh, yeah, Hudson Young, he scored a whole bunch of tries last year. The question is always, is he going to be able to replicate that? The same thing is for Nanai because he's one of those players that if he doesn't score a try, it can be 40s and 30s. I think he's had a game last year where he scored a try and finished in the 30s with a try. You know, so there we go. That that you know, that's that's worry. That's time to worry if he doesn't score those tries. Yeah. Six hundred fifty nine thousand four hundred. He's at ten point three percent. That's pretty pottish, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm, I was know. I was surprised at that's ten. I was I was expecting it to be a little bit lower, to be honest, just based off the price. But I guess people are looking at what he did last year. Um, yeah, under look, fifteen. You know, you're in pod territory. Look, the ownership. Uh, sorry, the 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 uh, average last year was sixty three. You know, so, I mean, people um, thought he had an absolute wow of a year last year, but David Fafita had a rubbish year and still beat him by three points on average. Yeah. Um, so, look, uh, he, he's projected this year, in by my view, at 64.8. For a guy who scores a hell of a lot of tries, the PPM's 0.81. A lot of them are not tackle-breaking sort of things, are they? He just takes the catch. Yeah, very um, good aerial threat, which is bad because you don't get the line break for that as well. Yep. I think the big so, thing I think the big thing with Nenai is defensively he was not great last year. I think he was tackling under 90% in terms of his uh, success rate, so he's giving away a fair few missed tackles. And look, that might improve with age and experience. Um, but you know, he did score a lot of points, but also, you know, had a lot of negatives against him. Yep, yeah, round 15, round 19, round 24 for the buys is good. Um, you know, he's probably a good chance to go to origin as well. So early doors, it's gonna be okay for you. Um, look, I like their draw early, and I reckon he's a potential try scorer in most of their first eight games. It's not a really hard draw, and I think versus opposition, I've had a look, and he's he has a good um, hit rate against that as opposition for tries. Does he improve this year? Um, if he got his PPM up to 0.9, for instance, which is not not a big jump, um, he'd be at 72. So I think I agree with you. We don't. It could either be second year syndrome or he is one of the really talented players in our game. And it depends what narrative you go with. I think that the Cowboys they just shocked everyone and probably punched overs last year. Don't you reckon? Yeah, hundred so, percent. That's what I'm worried about. Like I'm just worried that the Cowboys yeah. do come back to earth a little bit. And I'm saying they're well entrenched in the eight, but I'm expecting them to go a little bit back. Yeah, I'm not, tipping them, se- I'm not tipping them for I'm not tipping for second or third, like they did last year. Like, I, I just don't see it happening again. And that's the thing. Like, if Nenai doesn't score the tries, I think that's what a lot of people are banking on. A lot of people are banking yeah. on this early draw and Nenai scoring a lot of tries. I just worry that teams, you know, will do a lot of film study on him in the offseason and say, look, he's an aerial threat. Uh, let's get our, you know, tall center onto him on, on kicks. And I just worry. Like, I remember a game, I think he either scored a hat-trick or he scored four tries. I think he scored 103 points or something, which is yeah. not good. Yeah, look, that's the thing with him. Um, you know, he, he he if he doesn't score a try, and sometimes even when he scores a try, um, it can be a low score. You need multiple tries in a way. And I, I try not to play super coach relying on, you know, I don't I don't start with Alex Johnston until I start to see him going a run of scoring tries. Yeah. Nano is in that same mold. You can get him on a run. But the funny thing is, is in the pros, um, I reckon this is the time if you're going to take a punt on him, you should go. They've got a great opening draw, no early buys. Um, I reckon that there's a better chance for him to the start of the season than there is at the end of the season. Um, look, and that's my cons. He's got low ones in him. If there's no try, you're going to um, – it's a it's a bust, isn't it? Uh, I think that the Cowboys dip a little bit this year. So, um, you know, I, I want to see whether he does dip a little bit himself as well. Um, yeah, I'm on the fence about it, and I don't know, but I can understand why people are doing it. Nice run. He's a try scorer. It could he he could hurt people if he doesn't have a second year syndrome. Another one of these guys who their super coach season is probably done after round 13. You know, buys in round 15, 19, 24. Uh, origin player as well, so he's going to be missing a big chunk of that middle year. He's out round 24, which is the first week of finals for super coach classic. I mean. Yeah, a lot of these guys are just done after round 13, which, you know, you need to, you need to take that in, into consideration. Now, that could be great because he does have that great draw to start the season. And then if you know that he's done at the end of the season or at midway through the season, you can just gamble on him to start and then move him on. For me, I'm avoiding, I'm just belie- I'm just buying into the second season narrative. However, with Pat Carrigan, 654K, another, another guy who should have been higher in the NRL Roast's Hottest 100. Very, very good looking man. 14.1% ownership, which feels quite high for a very meat and potatoes uh, back row. Um, however, did average 62 last year. And I just want to note that that was his first season back from an ACL. Uh, only yeah. one player had ever gone 
better in their first season back, and that was Roger Tuovasashek back in 2015 for the Roosters, and that was on the yeah. wing, so it wasn't like it was a middle position. But Carrigan was... What a year. What a year. You wouldn't have even known he had one. He Car- yeah, he was, he was excellent. Absolutely excellent. Excellent for, for, the, for the Broncos, and as a Queenslander myself, he was phenomenal for us during Origin. Um, just... The bloke is is a gun. Like honestly, I remember when he was made captain. I think two years ago, there was a lot of criticism on him, and probably rightly so. Probably a little bit too young for it. But boy, he took it in his stride. Last year, averaged sixty two, and that was first season back from an ACL. Uh, I I you've got him projected at a sixty six. Um, I'm pretty much around the same sixty six, sixty seven. I think with all this pain half stuff. If he does lose minutes, then Pat Carrigan will be the, the beneficiary of it. Uh, buys in round 16, 19, 25. So, another one of these guys whose value is probably done after round 13. Something to, something to keep in mind there when you're picking your teams. Have a look at the buys. Have a look at if they play Origin. Have a look if it's going to affect your you know end of season planning. I worry this year, Ado, this is a little bit off topic, but I worry a lot of people will be looking at buy planning in round 13 and picking a bunch of guys who could be out round 20 to 25. I think when you're doing your buy planning for mid-season, you need to make sure these guys are, if they're out, you need to plan for two trades um, because, yeah, the three buyers are definitely going to hurt. Uh, in draft, round three, if you believe there's more minutes, uh, he'll be a great grab. I think he's, you know, consistent to our F1 in draft. I think you could build two RF around him. Uh, the pros, uh, you know, he's a year further on from a major injury. We've, we've said this already. And he really looked to level up. You know, he added a little bit more through his game. He countless times last year, mate, he played 40 minutes straight in the first half and then, you know, had a 20-minute stint on the bench after halftime and then came on for the last 20 minutes. If that can be managed a little bit better, maybe coming off after 35 minutes, having the five-minute spell, having the halftime spell, and then playing a few more minutes in the second half, I think that will be absolutely huge for his 2RF stocks. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big, big fan, and you've written here you could push 70 minutes. I don't think that's out of the question. I think he's got yeah, the. Mo- I, mean, look, I think it was he's got the motor. Last year, it was 61 last year. So if you think that he's a year on from that major injury, they've overworked Hass. Yeah. Uh, if you think that he can jag an extra nine minutes, he's going to be a 70 plus just on his PPM, which he's done very consistently over his career. Who are you? Yeah. Pref- who would you prefer, Carrigan or Nanai? I reckon I'd probably take Carrigan because I I did the study. This was your one. Um, I did the study on him and I kind of, ones that I'm doing when I'm looking into them, I'm like, well, I thought he, you know, I thought the minutes were much higher last year and he's 62. He averaged last year of 61 minutes and it was coming back off an ACL. It was an ACL, wasn't it? So um, I just reckon this year is a much better year and he really, I think he's, I mean, I don't rate him as their most important forward. Yeah, I would I would agree that too. I think the narrative has turned. Um, he is not out with all upside. There is some negatives with him. Uh, we have mentioned round 16 onwards, not great buys, does play origin. So if you are starting with him, um, you know, probably prepare to move him out after three, uh, after three months uh, and then, yeah, probably not to look at bringing him back. Also his coach, Vertex. I wrote, Kevy is a bit loco. Yeah, he's hard to peg. And that's right. Look, I think Kevy will get better with his rotations and Carrigan is a staple of that front row, but you can never be too, too sure. Um, yeah, so that's Pat Carrigan, huge, huge fan. In that sort of top tier, I would rank them in terms of Murray, Fafita, Carrigan, then Nanai. You could easily have Fafita as one. I'm not. If you put Fafita as one, I'm not going to put him against you. You could have Fafita as four. He's that kind of guy um, that could be the, the best of this bunch or the worst of this bunch. So I'm not against it. However, as a Tigers fan, some good news came out this week. Big Johnny Bateman, he's got his visa, he's coming, visa. but he's had a very, very, uh, you know, disrupted preseason, hasn't he? Yes. Um, look, I've seen some of the footy because I do follow him, even though I'm a salty Raiders fan. Um, and he's uh, been, you know, doing what he can over there. Um, he is going to come off not much of a run up, is he? Because we're getting so close to the season. Do you start. think he starts round one? Well, I don't think he does. I reckon- I reckon um, there's a good chance that he doesn't. Um, Which is fantastic yeah. for Supercoach because I would love for him to come off the bench for a month and we get him at like fourth 470K. I mean, imagine if he played two 40, 50 minute oh. games. Uh, yeah, because he needs 75 minutes um, to be relevant, I reckon. I, so. think, I think he'll eventually work up to that. I think he'll be an 80 minute edge back rower. But yep. I would love for him to spend four weeks just getting 40 minutes a game. Well, it'll be perfect. Um, look, he's he's um, 5.6% ownership, which is really uber pod. 
Uh, we know that he's going to be here now, but I couldn't touch him with the 10 foot pole because I just don't think you're going to get him to start. He's 2000. We've got to go back to 2020, yep. the old green machine days. His average was 70. He spent two years in the NRL. His average was 70 in both of those I years. I think it was 72 the year before as well. Yep. So the bloke, you know, was a stud. And people, and this was the thing when the prices came out, his price came out 80 the day that we had the, the price increases. So everyone saw 6.30 to 6.22 and was like, oh, that's putrid. But in the old system, he's priced at a 58 average. Yeah. So, look, um, I just reckon, look, it is three more years on. I don't know if you've caught any of his highlights over there in the old Super League. <laughs> there there, there ain't many. <laughs> that hasn't been good. Um, But, look, and then, look, if he was available for round one. That's what I was going to ask you. That's what I was going to ask you. If, if you know that he, Tim Sheen says, all right, he's playing 70 plus minutes from, from, from the get-go. Well, I'm more interested if he if he does if they say well he's going to come in and we're going to, he's an 80 minute back rower he's been training while he's been over there so we where he's fit we're ready to put him in uh, and if I know I knew he was going to play 80 minutes from round one I think there is some value there I have projected him to play 75 minutes um, at his career PPM getting 65.25 is my projection um, for him. If he gets 80 minutes, that'll obviously be up around the 70, won't it? So uh, I, I just worry about him because it's just too much of a close run thing to, to the start of season. Um, in draft, I said he's a big name and people will probably grab him early. I'm yeah, sure. I think Imagine he's going to go. center wing as well. I think he'll be him. overdrafted in draft, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I would have just you know, around six or seven, seven probably for me. Um, the pros, he's averaged 70 plus in the two seasons that he was here. Uh, it's kind of hard to go and say um, that he'll do that again because, you know, he's in his 30s now. And that, and, and that's the, we know that's the age for a back rower. And he's looked pretty, I mean, super, he, Brody Croft's a star in the, in the Super Man, League. Man of Steel, Brody Croft, thank you very much. Yeah, so and, and he's not even looking good over there. Maybe, but Johnny is the kind of player that I reckon gives what he needs to give. If yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. You know when when he needs to, he he stands up. Um, so I and that's my pros. He's a go getter, and the Tigers will use him. It'd be crazy not to use him because he's a class, isn't he? Like I reckon, um, it's hard. You're hard pressed taking a better second row, aren't you? Yeah, I, I think we we probably might happen. Um, Bateman. Um, the cons. <laughs> Salty Raiders fan. He's not even here because of visa issues. Well, he is now. He's three years older and he's in a worse team. Sorry, Josh. I know you're a Tigers fan, but it's not as good as the Raiders were getting to the grand final. A lot of it had to do with him as well, but it was a grand final ready team. Our window was wide open. I think the Tigers are a couple of years um, short of that. Um, He's three year olders and a worse team. I've kind of been um, kind with the 65.25, um, and I wouldn't surprise if he got a 60. And that is basing it on the, the being older and, you know, playing in the Super League and having doubts on whether he can play 80 minutes. Yeah. Well, if you believe that Bateman can be, play 80 minutes? I reckon 622 is a steal if he was there for round one. Oh, mate. Um, if, 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 he, if you told me he was playing 80 round one, he'd be in my side because he's yeah. priced at a 58. For a bloke yep. that's average 72 and 70, even a slight downturn, even if we get 80% of John Bateman, he's averaging 65, and that's keeper status for me. Come round 25, 26, when your final team's set, a 65 player would probably be your one, probably your second or third reserve, and I think John Bateman could be there the entire season. What I'm hoping, though, is I pick him up in round five after he has two price falls uh, because he has played 40 minutes off the bench. But, yeah, it's, it's either way. Like... If I, I'm not keen right now because I don't have any clarification, but boy, I was just looking at, while you were talking, I was looking at Luke Thompson, and I know it's not the same because he was training in a COVID bubble uh, away from the team when he first came over, uh, but he started the first three weeks kind of slow. So yeah, look, I, I, I'm hoping it goes one or two ways for John Bateman. If this slow start could almost be perfect for us, really, for an own, um, because he, he could just to get a nice... If he gets down into mid-fives... Oh, if he got to 550, I'd snap him up, because 550 is priced at 52, 53, um, which is just ridiculous. And yeah, I mean, once he is fully embedded into the system, I don't see anyone taking minutes from him and IPAP. You know, Tim Sheens can rely on both those guys to play massive minutes and then just rotate Clemmer, Offa Hengawi, Stefano, Bolle. Like, he can just rotate those guys through the middle with lockdown on, on your edge. Let's just see what John we get, eh? Yeah, and that's the and that's the, the big thing I think. Obviously, Tigers fans have huge expectations. If I if we get seventy five percent of Canberra Raiders John Bateman, I'm still taking that as a you know as a win. 
Yep. Uh, Teague Wilton, I'm so glad you gave me Teague because I am the number one ticket holder on the Teague train. 493k. 3.7% ownership. This wow. this is just too... This should be 337 No, look, in all seriousness, I think the presence of Wade Graham is putting people off. However, I'm not fussed. 2022 averaged uh, 47, but you need to go and look at his probably round 1 to 12 um, averages before Graham came back. Projected average of 58.5. Ado, I'm going to go a tad higher. I'm going to go yeah. 63, 64. I genuinely think he's mid-60 capabilities if he plays, yeah, if I've he gone, plays edge. I've gone and projected Yeah, oh, you've gone, you've gone I've very gone, low. Yeah, I do always go in there and temper my expectations when I'm projecting him. 58.5 is the minimum I reckon you're going to get out of Teague because they're using Graham off the bench as a middle. That's that was what it looks like to me. Yeah, uh, a, a wonderful follower sent me um, some in-depth stats on the Raiders pairing, not Raiders, the Sharks pairing yesterday. And unfortunately, I don't have them prepped, but I'll be making a post on that with, uh, you know, I think it was Talakai and Wilton with and without Graham. Um, so I'll be making a post on that, check the socials. But yeah, Graham was just, an, uh, Graham was just a thorn in the side for Wilton, but... I think we were talking about Josh uh, Papali'i the other day and how he is very aware of his age and he is very happy to take a backseat role and, and help the development of the club that he loves. I, I think Wade Graham is the exact same. I think Wade Graham is very happy to take a backseat, come on, play that roaming middle, be the first man there if anything happens to Hines or, or uh, Moylan. And I just think T. Wilton is one of those guys who has a huge motor. Uh, I think he scored... 35 points in a half last trial, uh, 35 in 40 minutes. Did have a try assist, but blokes just a base, stick time. base that machine. Stick oh, time. I love, I love Teague Wilton. Um, he's the kind of guy that I would forego a premium to RF for because I think the value for him is there. Um, the pros that you've put here is the price. He looks to have secured the edge over Graham, who was a middle off the bench. We've said this. If Teague plays 70 minutes, uh, yeah, I think 70 minutes is the minimum. I generally think he could play 80. Uh, the cons, you know, the estimate of a nine zero point nine ppm is higher than his career, um, which it's it's stupid because Teague Wilton has never had, and this is the hard thing with using stats. I'm a very much a stats guy. You're very much a vibes guy, and this is the problem that guys like myself can get skewed up in if we don't watch all the footy. We just look at the ppm and the career. But if you go back and watch footy, which is something that you're excellent at, you know that he's been in and out of the team, in and out of middle edge. So his ppm yeah. is kind of skewed. Um, my biggest thing is just looking what he did with Wade Graham out of the side. I, I'm I'm probably biased because I have a huge, huge love for him and a huge, huge love for the next man on the list. But I, I just, I'm failing to see much downside. I know people are put off by Wade Graham, but I just think T. Wilton is the future of that left edge position. Yeah, I think so. Um, and that left edge is Heinz, isn't it? Uh, so, yeah, I think Heinz plays. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so, I mean, look, it's it's a good... I mean, he's such a value pick, I reckon, for someone who, if he plays 70, he'll average, you know, he'll be pushing mid-60s. Um, and I, I reckon, I mean, even compared to someone like um, Patrick Carrigan, he's a hell of a lot cheaper. I think he so matches, I, reckon- Car- I think he could match Carrigan, and that's probably yeah. spicy. Um, I want to put you a question. So he's currently owned by 3.7%. If yeah. Wade Graham just vanished off the face of the earth, or Craig Fitzgibbon said, Teague's playing 80 regardless, do you think that pushes up closer to 15%? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that the 3.7 says people are scared, worried about um, Wade Graham. Yeah, and that's, and know, that's and the thing. I owned Mulatalo when Ray, Wade Graham came back. Oh, and it killed him. Buggering. Killed him. Same with Telekai. So uh, are people are just, you know, it's these little things that get around Supercoach and everyone's like, well, Wade Graham is kills every Supercoach option around him. So um, people think that Wade Graham could come in and take minutes off Wilton. Nah. If you believe that Wilton's going to get 70 to 80 minutes on an edge, I reckon. On what in that first trial, Wade Graham came on and, and played in the middle. He was a, he played in the middle. Yeah, he played. He played at six. I think he looked really good at six, and that's. I think that yeah. would reflect his ability at thirteen. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just. I'm really, really high on Teg Wilton. I was really, really hard at Elliot until we found out he had uh, surgery for his hip issue in the off season, which has tempered expectations a little bit. I think he'll be a guy that and I'm his looking ankle at as well. Yeah, the yeah. He just he rolled his ankle as well, so. Adam Elliott, the train, I've jumped off the Adam Elliott train, jumped on the T train. Um, but yeah, talk to me about Adam Elliott because he's had a few setbacks this preseason, which has probably tempered his value. He has. Um, look, he costs more than Wilton. So I think at the moment I'd probably take Wilton over him. But look, 
564,500. We've been big fans of him, you and I, because I'm a Raiders fan, and he was so good for us last year. I'm not a Raiders fan. I'm not a Knights fan. I'm just a lover of all things Adam Elliott. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... Hell of a dong on him as well. Hey, um, oh, hey. I think I think I think my love for Adam Elliott just comes from the fact that the amount of criticism that I received for picking him up midway through last year, like when you yeah, have boost, those, boosted for Elliott. When you have those kind of things where you cop so much slack, it's like I'm gonna hold all that just because it's it's so good. <laughs> Uh, look, he's seven point one percent ownership, which I think is probably a bit high for someone now who it not is. Play look, any um any trials now it is with all the news. Yeah, Wil- Wilton and save yourself seventy k. Um. The 2022 average was 54, which is really good. I've I've got him projected for a 65, so I think the Teague Wilton's probably projected around the same. Um, round 10, round 14, round 19 for the buys. I, I'm not talking draft. I said, look, I don't know when you're getting. He's late, late, late. He's a hard one, isn't nine. he? Yeah, because he's a hard one to peg for. What and, and any Adam O'Brien. The reason why we um were like, what's going on with Barnett is because he uses he thinks that Kurt Mann's a great thirteen. Remember that so, weird time um, where obviously Kurt Mann's stocks were so high, but I think it was Palmer Sully uh that was just kept getting put in and Kurt Mann get kept getting moved to the bench. Um, look, I think with draft you ha- you haven't given a pr- projective here, and I'm not going to give one either. But I think if you're drafting him, you need to draft him with the expectation that he will peak, or not peak, but he will hit his straps in probably round ten. Um, with or with the off-season surgery to his hip, because he was battling through that at the Raiders at the back end, and then obviously had the rolled ankle at training. Don't yeah, expect the world. You're not going to get the value out of him in early season. Um, you go, you yeah, go peop- I, I just worry that people will draft him, and then after round six, look to trade him on in draft, because they're like, oh, well, he's shit. Hold tight with Adam Elliott. You need to hold firm, because he will have to build into the season. Yep. Uh, my pro is he's a medium good price, 564 so he's a value pick, really. Um, him and Teague Wilton, um, but he's and he was because he was starting off the bench for the Raiders, and so we've got a bit of value there, I think, on price. He's a really talented lock, in my opinion. I think he's one of the more talented natural 13s, um, in the game, uh, and he's likely to be starting there for the Knights in 2023 at a point. I don't even know if he's going to come in now with no preseason games to start there, which is why I couldn't touch him. Uh, I'm tipping 65 minutes for him. Um, for his 65 average, but more minutes um, is possible. Uh, if if I got to look, I'll just read you my last comment in the cons. What we think that Elliot um, should play minutes wise does not translate necessarily <laughs> to what coach yes. wants. The reason Barnett would have been an absolute stud, especially when he was kicking goals, but he just only get under 50 minutes, and the coach really does not use these. Th- he he just loves Kurt. Mann he has a hard yeah. He has minutes. a hard on for just fucking minutes around doesn't he yeah he, he absolutely fucks with minutes so i couldn't take elliot I, if elliot got 65 minutes i reckon he'll be an absolute stud and a bargain i just don't think he's going to get it under under o'brien as a coach and i reckon o'brien's going to get fired Ooh. this year yeah. i mean look at ponger in there in the halves did you i mean we should go not off the topic he's going to miss 20 tackles a game boy that tweet that might age very well then i put a tweet out of Callum Ponga. i was like oh ponga's looking really good in front line defense because he put a couple of put a couple <laughs> yeah, he, put, he put a couple of good hits on and then about 20 minutes later just got absolutely fucking exposed well, that's the problem like, with ponga <laughs> is he does not give a flying fuck he really doesn't oh, yeah. Don't um, touch ponga. we'll get to him in five or eight is he gonna get you uh, probably okay yeah. so this is where we have left a couple of people out you know we haven't mentioned Guys like Hamaola Kawatu, we haven't mentioned guys like Should Isaiah Papali'i, we haven't yep. mentioned guys like Nat Butcher. However, we are going to touch on Brother Egan, four hundred and eighty-two. Skipping TPJ. Okay. Oh, sorry, I have missed. I have skipped TPJ. How could we forget TPJ? Five hundred and twenty-five k, eight percent ownership, which seems eight percent too high. <laughs> <laughs> Last year averaged uh, a nice, neat 50.0 average. I have him pegged at about a 54 this year. Buys in rounds 13, 17, 23. Draft uh, round six or seven. I think he does pick up front row forward duel uh, before round one because Cameron Serrallo has confirmed that he's basically a front row forward. Uh, mm. The pros for Tavita Pankai Jr. He has led the league in offloads for the past four years. His PPM is extremely consistent, so we know exactly what we're going to get from him um, with his output at a good level. And he's an absolute wrecking ball. We know this. Uh, the cons. He has already been confirmed to be playing in the front row, so we won't see the 69, uh, 69 minutes per game, which was his 2022 career high. Uh, and he floats around a 1 to 1.05 PPM. 
So we would need 60 minutes for him to be a value. And with the dog's pack playing, uh, and with him playing through the middle of the dog's pack, I just don't see him getting, you know, the minutes that we need. If he is going to, if he is going to present any value, he needs to have that dual status updated back to get FRF to RF. I agree. He he's just such a risky pick. Yeah, I mean the upside is definitely suspension there. Suspension and minutes. There's just it, once it gets to three red flags, it's probably not for me. Yeah, and I'm just worried. Like, I think it bodes well for uh, Raymond Fatala Mariner, who we'll touch on, you know, in, in a couple of picks. But him being confirmed to be playing through the front row, I just think he's the kind of guy that Cameron Serrano will say, TPJ, you're going to get 42, 45 minutes, go hell for leather, try and get your arm free as much as possible, just create as much havoc, and then we'll give you a spell. Whereas yeah, that's see, the- that's, a, that's a good point, because TPJ yeah. is one of those ones that if he does long minutes, he's less um, damaging, but yeah. when he comes in short stints, he does better things. He's got more energy. He doesn't... He, he goes out and he runs out of steam and starts to look pretty average. When he goes in in short stints for and just gets used as an impact guy, um, his impact is is felt. Yeah, um, and that's and, and that's the thing. Like, I just think you'll play 42, 43 minutes. Yep, and, and just abso- really well, absolutely... Though, yeah, for, for, for the Bulldogs, I think he'll be absolute weapon. But for Supercoach, I want him back at the Broncos being on the, being on the edge, playing 70 minutes a game. Um, yeah. But I just don't see that happening at the at the Broncos. However, I think for Bulldogs fans, it'll you know bode was super super well for you guys. Yeah, definitely. They've got a good pack going this year, and it could be um, not good for some of them in there, but um, or for Super Coach. But it'll be good in actual NRL. Now the next player, um, I just want to caveat with the projected averages. These are obviously when they're starting because someone like yeah. an Egan Butcher. Um, Ado has projected him at a 66. Obviously, he's not going to average 66 when he eventually goes back to the bench. I just want to caveat yeah, right. that. Yeah, I mean, it was hard. I, I could have done his whole year one. Oh, uh, it'll be like 40. It'll be like 40. Satili, but yeah. Yes, the Tilly and Angus coming back in. But that's silly because we're talking about the start of the year. Exactly. And you already probably move Egan Butcher off. So I think, I think about- these projected averages, maybe look at them for like a six-week sample size that we're talking about. Yep. Definitely. 482,100. So he's right in the Teague Wilton sort of price point. Um, he's at 1.4%, which is uber, uber pod mm. territory. His average was 46 last year. The thing that is worth noting is that he's not a 46 in a 50 minutes. Yep. He's a 46 in a 40 minutes. And that's why I prefer him to Nat. He's had a career um, PPM above the one. Coming off the bench, he sort of played a lot of middle. He sort of came in lock. So his PPM might go down a little bit, um, you know, if he's playing on an edge. I do expect that he's going to start on the edge with his brother, Nat. Mm -hmm. I personally would be taking Egan because he's got a better PPM and he is cheaper. Um, He's got buys in round four, round 13, round 19. So that buy in round four. If you've got um, Teddy... If you've got cheese and then you take yourself an Egan, you lose three players from that. And that's um, what's putting me off Sam Walker as well. Like just that early buy, it's awkward, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the early buy, it really spooks me. And I'm like, well, if I skip the cheese, I could treat myself to an Egan butcher. But if I go with cheese, I can't go Egan butcher. I think you so. have to limit yourself to three Panthers, three Roosters. And that's what's putting me off Toto. Because if I'm going to go clear, if I'm going to go Ghana, which we'll talk about, I don't want to go, I don't want to have three Panthers out round three. Three pan, uh, three roosters out round four. So I think you need to look at that as well in, in your considerations. Yeah, two stinky rounds of a lot of, you know, you can maybe do it for one round. Yeah, yeah, for one, but not back to back with premium teams. Yep. Um, look, uh, I've projected him for sixty six when he's starting. He's got a really nice PPM of one point one. If he gets sixty minutes, um, there's potential for it to be more. But we're just going really conservative. If Egan and Nat start, I think Nat might get the bigger minutes because he's got a bit more um, first grade under his belt. If you know I what also, I mean, he's got I also, dirty stripes. I also don't see Trent Robinson carrying two edges on the bench. Like I think he might carry Sio Wong, and that's. Yep. Kind of it. I don't really see him carrying many. Like Terrell May maybe can slot in on the edge, but I don't see many edge options. Like you're going to have Matt I mean, Lodge. If you're going to have 70 minutes. He'll score 70 points. Yeah. And I even if I you say he's going to drop in PPM um, to a one, Egan Butcher, when I watch them play, I'm like, fuck, he's a good player. He, he good, looks yeah. great. He looks the better of the Butchers. Very raw. Because he does have a lot oh. of errors in his game, but I think that'll be harnessed. I think also Statili Tupanua is not back for I want to say two about two months or so eight rounds. Um, yep. And Angus, we don't know what's going on there. So, but so just play yeah. it by ear. 
So that's my pros. I just reckon um, Egan is really attractive to me. He's kind of like in the same mold um, as all the ones that go on a good PPM. He doesn't need lots of minutes, but if he's going to get long minutes and he's going to get a, an extra 20, 30 minutes a game at what he normally does because he's a busy player, um, it, it could be a gold mine. Um, look, that was my, my, my cons. Cheese, Teddy, and you add Butcher in as a third, um, it could be a bit, a bit iffy for you. Um, and, you know, he's only going to be a short-term stay, but I reckon he could be – I can see Egan Butcher coming in at 482, getting himself up to 600 or more, yep, yep. and then you can get him to someone else right on the perfect to time where Gus to Bateman. Until he come back in. Now, Bateman. E- Egan when Butcher, ba- Bateman. After he's um, so I re- I'm, I'm a big fan. So am I. I'm huge. And the only reason I don't have him in my side is because of that round four bye. Um, mm. because I do have Teddy at the moment and I don't have Brandon Smith at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so you could get Egan if you wanted to. Maybe, um, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, yeah. Huge, I'm huge on Egan. Um, it wasn't fantastic in the trial last night, but you know, I, I think he's the better of the Butcher brothers. I think Nat Butcher is very similar to someone like a Boyd Cordner who runs a really good line, very safe. Um, you know, whereas Egan is similar to an Angus. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I like both of them. To so be do honest. I. So do I. I think I think Nat's a very very good ball runner, um, but I think Egan's similar to Angus, who can break a game open with an offload. You know, a little bit of footwork at the line, whereas Nat is your much more safer hole runner, just you know meat and potatoes. But love mm. Egan Butcher, and I love the one point four percent ownership. Also love Raymond Fatal and Mariner at only one percent ownership, uh, four hundred and seventy one k. Mate, we're getting a lot of pods in this mid range category this year, which I'm really liking. It's really making the dynamic of two RF interesting. Yeah, I think it's the most in, um, fun in this preseason, really. Sometimes it's center wing where we've got a, a whole plethora of ones to choose from. Sometimes there's a lot of halves available. This year it is. Uh, every team that's sent through to me um, is different in the second row forward. It's fun. Yep. I love it. I also, obviously, we wish Angus Crichton the best, but him being out has really thrown a spanner in. I think it's opened up a lot of avenues, and Ra- Ra- Raymond Fatale Mariner could be one of them. Uh, last year, average 44.9. I've been projected this year at about a 58, so we're looking at 10, 13 points of value, which could see him go up to 600K pretty quickly. Buys in round 13, 19, round 23. In draft, I've got him at sort of round 6 or 7. I think he could be a really sneaky value. Uh, I think a lot of draft players, after the first four rounds, that maybe aren't so engaged. We'll just look at averages and just look at last year and go, oh, yeah, whereas I think RFM could slip under the radar. For pros, he's finally right. He's finally good to go after two years. He had a horror... Is he, he, oh, he's made club captain and, you know, he's, he's named in the trial this week, so all eyes on him. I just, I'm really happy to see him back because he there was a big possibility that he could have lost his foot. Like, it could have been amputated. So, really good to see him back playing footy. Um, named club captain... And yeah. I think his main threat of minutes being lost in TPJ has been moved to the front row forward to accommodate yeah. RFM. Uh, yeah. Genuinely, a lot of us Supercoach fans who've been playing for years are big, are big fans of RFM. Yeah. Um, and what's his price? Well, that's the thing. He's four seventy. Yeah. So he's pri- mean, he's priced at forty. He's priced at under forty five points. I mean, if you if you've got too many roosters, I reckon um, Teague and and RFM are your guys. Tasty, tasty. Um, cons. He's never been an eighty minute guy. Um, back in twenty eighteen, his best was seventy four minutes p- and points per game, and sixty nine minutes in twenty twenty. So he would need around that seventy minutes at his PPM, which is around point eight three, um, to get that projected average that I've put him at. However. Uh, I don't see much threatening minutes being taken because uh, it, it just comes down to Seraldo, what it, what he wants from him. I don't think the, the bench makeup is going to take his minutes away. I think it's just going to be down to what Seraldo wants from him. And if he wants kick out to go hell for leather for 65 minutes and he wants RFM to be that safe 80-minute guy, um, you know, he's one I'm definitely looking at for trials. And yeah, yeah I just, mean, the captain, making him the captain of the club is probably yeah. a big, um, it, it makes it more confusing. And I just, I would have, I, if he wasn't the captain, I'd be like, oh, well, oh I don't yeah, quite get the minutes. Yeah, exactly. But when you make someone the captain, that's why I love Murray. He's the captain. He takes the team on his shoulders. I reckon RFM, he's the kind of player that that will mean the world to him, making captain for the club. Um, he's definitely one I'm going to. I'm probably going to clip this up and make it an Instagram post, but I just want to elaborate quickly when it comes to pods. Pods are important for uh, obviously a numer- a number of factors, but I don't want you guys to pick pods for the sake of picking pods. Um, we talk about ownership on this podcast a lot, and we talk about what, if we think plays are under or over. I don't want you to go out and just pick someone because they're 1% ownership, whereas I think someone like an RFM or an Egan Butcher, I think they're genuinely under-owned for their output. 
but you see people that just pick players and you, and you ask them, you're like, well, why have you picked that player? They're like, oh, they're a pod. I was like, well, they're only a good pod if they've got value. Yeah, if you're getting a pod, you've got to think that they're going to do as well, if not better, better. You've got to think they're doing better than the popular player. And that's the thing, yeah. because, because if the popular player scores 55 and the pod scores 65, you've made 10 points on the ground. But if you just pick a pod for the sake of it and they score 30, you know, you've lost a lot of value on the, on the, you know, the, the, the difference. So that's just a quick point that I wanted to make. Um, that's sort of the tier two of two RFs. We're going to jump into cheapy considerations headlined by a man who is owned by nearly 30% of people. Mm. Uh, I'm not really going to antipod this. I don't think, I, I don't know because guys like RFM, Egan Butcher, they've got huge upside, but I just think this man, he's safe as houses. He's not going to let me down. I don't really want to antipod that. Yeah, I mean, he is hard to leave out. I've left him out. Oh, we should probably say... We should probably say can't who, afford him with everything I want to do. We should probably say who uh, we're talking about. <laughs> 435,100 for Luke Garner. Um, look, he is 28.6% ownership. He's been a popular player to start the year. I would have thought he'd be even higher because he's gone from the Tigers up to the Penrith Panthers, filling in on that beautiful left edge um, where Kikau used to be. His 2022 average was 41 he got 66 minutes for that 41. I'm projecting him this year for 60.2. Now I'm saying he's going to get 70 um, minutes at his sort of PPM that he runs out of 0. 0.86. Do you think he'll get 70 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, I do. It could be 70 or 80. I mean, I think, I, don't I, think it, I, I honestly think it could be 80 because yeah. I just think he's that safe pair of hands. I don't think they're going to attack in the left so much. I'm sure you'll talk on this on pros and cons, but I just think Ivan Cleary will look to him. Um, you know, him and Liam Martin, Stables, Staples, sorry, and rotate Mitch Kenny, rotate Isaiah Yo, rotate Moses, Moses Leota and Fisher Harris and Spencer Lenu. I've heard some little bit of whispers that Spencer Lenu is going to be having a big uptick in minutes. So I think, you know, the, those minutes need to come from somewhere. I think Garner and Martin probably just lock down the edges. Well, that's it. So, I mean, he's going to get 60 minimum. If you're getting um, Garner, you'd say, well, I think he's going to get 60 plus, and I think he'll get that. Um, if that's on 70 minutes. If he gets 80 minutes, we'll we'll, we'll cover that. Um, buys in round three, round 13, round 19. So you have to think about that as well because we all have Cleary. Some of us will have Garner and we'll, or, you know, or we might. Some people are going with um, old mate there in the hooker. Sonny Luke. So, you know, you've got to be careful about carrying three of them. Well, that's, uh, and that's what we talked about before. Like having three Panthers and three Roosters and six players out in two weeks that you're going to have in round three and four when, when price rises are happening. And then if you have a Fafita or a Tanner Boyd, they're out round five. So that's why buy planning is so crucial this year. Yep. Um, oh, for draft, I've said he's going to be very late rounds. It's going to be a 60 most likely. And people will have, um, you know, high expectations that he'll do better because it's a Panthers team. But I wouldn't be drafting him in a hurry. Um, I think there's much better options. Um, in my pros, it's an enormous um, team upgrade, and he looks to be starting on one of the most fruitful edges in the NRL. You can conservatively guess that he's going to get his best PPM. In the past, um, when he was on the good wicket at the Tigers, he was um, a point nine three. I reckon that's elite for second row. And that's yeah. the thing that we like about Luke Garner. If they're an edge and they're getting 0.93, that's really elite because they do play better minutes. Um, so that's going to see his average more like a 65. Uh, if he gets his career PPM, that's his career PPM by 70 minutes. If he gets his career PPM by 80 minutes, he'll be pushing high 60s, early 70s. So well, he, um, he performed his best when sort of he had Benji Marshall there on the side and I think Luai and Benji are, you know, similar in terms of the players that they are. Very, you know, crafty. Um, 2019, 2000, uh, sorry, 2019, 2020 were probably his best years with 58 and 56 points a game. I, I reckon he can, he's going to get five to seven more tries this year, and that's going to make the PPM up to his career yeah. best minimum. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy got, just to, 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 to roll with the crowd here. Yeah, he's going to, I mean, you trust that Penrith Panthers team to get the absolute best out of Luke Garner. There's no doubts about it. Um, look, the cons, he's been okay in the past. Um, he's been a steady PP. He's, in, he's been in a PPM decline over the last four years. Is it 70 minutes? Is it 65 minutes? I don't know. I'm saying if it's 60, um, it's a bust. You do need him to get 70 plus and an 80 is perfect. Yeah. Um, he's Because he's, he's not a PPM monster. Like he's, and, and you said this in the cons, like you said, he's been okay. And I think that's, that's it for Luke Garner. He's okay. And at the Tigers, like, 
I, I, I didn't want to see him go because he's a, a really good footballer, but he's just a very okay footballer. And if he gets yeah. 60, I'm not keen. If he gets 70, then I think there's value. Yeah, definitely. And look, Hosking came over there from the Broncos, who looks like a bit of a talent. Sorensen was outstanding. I do think he's better as a bench, but there are some actual natural second rowers um, that are going to be putting pressure on him. And you've got big minutes players like Yo. And and yeah, if you think that these guys are going to play huge minutes on the edge, they're going to have to rotate some of their middles. And I don't know if Yo is going to give up too many minutes. I reckon he's a no-brainer, isn't he? At 435, he's so cheap. Of, of um, the options in there, you've got Eli Katoa. We think Law Euro is going to be good. Um, you know, for an extra few dollars, you can get a, an Egan Butcher or a Teague Wilton. Luke Garner, anyone who goes into that Penrith Panthers team, just rest assured they're yeah. going to do very well. There's a lot of fat. I am surprised. a lot of good, good stuff happening in that team for players like Luke Garner to get tries and, um, you know, line breaks in. I am surprised. Get line breaks created by Cleary and Luai. I'm surprised of his ownership because uh, at the time of recording, it's 28.6. When you've got guys like Brandon Smith at 51% ownership, I would I would have expected Garner to be upwards of closer to 35, but that could be good for, for owners. Um, mate, you're getting really good at this podcasting stuff and segueing because we're going to talk on Trent Liero, who oh, I really I love a bit of lawyer. Oh, right? I'm really keen. 365k, two percent owned. Miss, not a misprint. Should be 22. No, look. In all honesty, Liero averaged 34.7 last year. Really hard to look into those numbers. What I want to look into is his average across uh, games played over 55 minutes, where he averaged, I think, 54 points. So. 20 points undervalued if he does play 55 minutes, which I think he's going to be pushing 80. Um, I've got him projected at 56 points this year, so that's 22 points of value. Buys in round 9, 13, and 19. So, you know, could make some cash in the first nine weeks. You know, one buy in round 13. So we could stretch over that middle period. You know, Melbourne Storm are going to be decimated through origin, um, which will be, you know, great for his minutes, I believe. In draft, I think he's, you know, round 10, round plus. I think people only looking at averages will miss the amazing value on the arrow. The pros looks to, uh, I wrote this before um, uh, the assistant coach confirmed that he won the spot. So a bit of breaking news. The storm have confirmed that Ellie Katoa and Trent Liero have won the race for the edge spots with Tarek Sims looking to be playing to the middle. Uh, but so I wrote this beforehand, take that with a grain of salt looks to have close to an 80 minute roll locked up with departures, giving big minutes. Uh, I, I wrote hearing whispers that Trent has ticked a lot of boxes in the preseason. We now that yeah. we, we now know that's true. Those uh, whispers were true. Yeah, which is nice. Um, and it's set to line up on the left to our edge spot, 20 points undervalued. Like I said, we know that's confirmed. Now, the, the cons, slight PPM concerns. You know, he's not the biggest worker, and there's obvious concerns with Nas, Sims, Katoa, uh, Tui Tamakamika, all sort of lying around. You can chuck Eisenhuth in there as well. Um, I think there's a young fella, Chan. I think uh, Storm fans rate him really highly as well, a young uh, back rower coming through. So there's obviously concerns over his minutes. Um, I just think if the Storm underperform, it's not going to be Trent that's cut. I think it might be Eli Katoa, who's no no doubt about it. If you said to me who's going to score the higher, you know, higher score this year out of Trent and Katoa, it's Katoa every day of the week. I just think he's also more the concern to be benched. And he's 65k more. Um, but yeah, look, I'm really, really keen. I, I think he, Trent is a stud and we'll see his best with a consistent role. It's hard for young players to really hit their straps when they're constantly in and out of size, playing 30 minutes, playing 80 minutes. Um, uh, yeah, look, he did score a 35 in, eight, in 80 minutes performances last year. So as I said, the points concerns are there. But on a Melbourne Storm side on Munster's Edge... It's just hard to pass up at 365. You know, we're talking about Luke Garner being a near must-have at 435. Uh, you know, for, for 50k, for 80k cheaper, would you rather be on Munster's side or, or you know, Lua's side? And yeah, yeah, I, just think, he, I, I think he, Trent's being under... You kinda, if you're in my case where I can't afford a Garner, even though it's uh, not much money, um, Lawyer Rowe is a fairly safe pick. It looks like, even said, he was more confirmed before Katoa. You know, he was confirmed as the guy to start. Um, I really like him as a midi for 360. That's like with Tikamano kind of money, someone in the second row. I think if you've got a Hopgood as your fourth and you've got a uh, lawyer row and you can switch those two guys around at your own leisure, I reckon that's a way to go cheap in the in the second row. I've gone Murray and Fafita because I've got a lawyer row and I've got a Hopgood. That's four players I reckon I can rely on 
you know, if I, if I need to. So um, I really like him this year. He is true value. My camera has Starting. my camera has died. So for anyone watching on YouTube, you're going to see Ado's face and not mine. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to fix this up. Um, yeah. So it's just you, mate. Uh, oh, have, that's it. I'm taking it all we, off. We, we only have a couple more to go. Uh, one of them is Jermaine Hopgood. Yeah. Uh, I've said this numerous times. I do not know how this guy is not the most owned player player uh if you want to take over the the floor for two minutes i'm going to fix my microphone and my and my camera yeah. look um jermaine hopgood he is in second row forward we've seen him um very much confirmed to to take the 13 to start the year for the paramount eels we've seen him in two trials and well we've seen him in a trial and in the um all-stars game and he's looked absolutely sensational um he could be one of those absolute we have these weapons that we get um, in super coach, like imagine getting um, IPAP on the swing where he came from the Warriors and he went over to the Parramatta Eels when he was cheap. Imagine being what I mean, I don't know if I even got him at that time where he was cheap. He was never cheap after that. Um, and Jermaine Hopgood looks like that kind of guy. He's one of those ones that screams um, season long keeper if you need him. Um, 298,800. He's 45.2% owned. Should be 60. Should him. be 60%. Last year, well, it was a 36 average from 38 minutes. I'm projecting him this year conservatively for 67.6, and that's from 65 minutes. Um, he's got a really nice, healthy PPM of 1.04. He's an absolute worker. Um, buys in round 14, round 18, round 27. That is that congested period over that late sort of rounds. He will, um, I reckon he'll probably be undrafted, won't he? No, no, no. He'll no, 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 no. get drafted really, really late, but... I mean, if people are going to grab him before they grab um, an Egan Butcher, you know, like probably. Yeah, I think I think the problem with him, like, obviously it's a long way away. Also for YouTube people, my camera's cooked it, so I'm sorry. Um, I just, with that round 27 buy, I mean, people are calling him a keeper. It's way too early to say that. Um, but if he does look like a keeper, say round 15, do you look to sell him? and just capitalize because of that round 27 buy, which, or, or is that fine? Because, you know, super coach finals are round 26. So you could probably hold him up until round 26. If you've got a trade spare, then, then move him on. It's just an awkward buy. But just to see, just to see, uh, you got to see what he makes. If he gets it up to a price where you can get him on to a, you know, just say Gus is back or you haven't got a Murray. If he gets himself up to those sort of reachability, you can move him on. Yeah. Um, look, um, He's 298,000. He's starting lock. He should be in every single team. Um, Likely the cheapy of the year contender. He's got a solid PPM and he's got a nice role um, at Parry. He's a real talent and he's looked terrific in the trials and in the All-Stars. The cons, um, it looks like they're going to be using Maddo in the lock position this year. So what happens to Hopgood's minutes when um, Maddo's back? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it's hard to... It, obviously, we're, we're clutching at straws. It's hard to come up with cons for a yeah. starting edge, for a starting lock at 290. Yeah, well, he's so cheap that it's not a con, even if he does lose minutes. The, but the, the only issue... People who think he's going to get 70-plus um, minutes, that no. may not be the case once Mano's back. The only the, the only question here is, like, do you build around him or not? And that's the only question to ask. It's not whether you own him or not. It should be must-have. Yeah, you should own him. And whether you go with him at front uh, at second row three... Is a is a question because uh, when's Mano out? He's back for round four. And this, let's 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 talk on this because I don't think he should be a second row three. I think you should be a second row four, or you should have a really good backup. So, for example, myself, I've got um, Liero and Hopgood. You can argue who's two, who's three, but I think you need to have someone on the bench because yeah, if you're picking on. if you're picking a Blore or you're picking a Dory or you're picking a Wong, like if they go down, do you if if Hopgood goes down as your two RF three and you've got no bench cover? Like, do you really want to be playing CSO or Wong for 20 minutes off the bench? That's, yeah. I think, I, mean, Hop, I, had I think, a, I had a, I had, a, I had a re, uh, an iteration of my team where I had Hopgood at his third front row and I had um, Ray Stone as my guy on the bench. And it just, I made me feel uneasy. And that's the thing. Like, um, we're not saying Hopgood's not good enough to start. Don't get me wrong, he is. But if anything happens, it's your bench guys you need to look at. And maybe if you run Dory as a emergency, then yeah, you could argue not having it. But I've got four playing to uh, two RFs at the moment in my side. Yep. Look, there's not many cons. You should have him if yep. you're a serious super coach player. Now, Ray Mustone. 31, <laughs> 31% ownership, 246K. Uh, average last year of 29.3. I've projected him at 37. I think that's best case scenario. Uh, buys in rounds 11, 16, 23. In draft, I think he's going to go undrafted or he should go undrafted. 
Uh, the pros, very much a Wayne Bennett player. Like if you just looked up Wayne Bennett player in the, in the dictionary, it's it's just Ray Stone, isn't it? Yeah. He will give you that picture of him covered in blood. Oh, mate, in the that's, that, that gets me going. Um, that's hey, the thing. That's NRL. He's such an NRL player, isn't he? That goes into my next point. Like he will give his all every game. Yep. He'll be extremely I mean, consistent. I had a bit of a look at him and he goes, he's PPM over his career. And it's not a short career, four years. He's always over one. He, well, that's the thing. a it's, bloody worker. It's an extremely consistent PPM, which actually has been increasing year on year. He's got a handy duel with late buys, which is nice. The cons, he's never played more than 29 minutes a game, sort of on average, and I think he needs 40 minutes to be value. Look, that could be there um, if Gilbert plays big minutes and they want to rotate someone like a Jesse Bromwich as he's getting older or whatnot. I'm just, I'm sight unseen. I think we get a good, we get a, maybe two week look at Ray Stone, and you can maybe downgrade one of your cheapies. Um, however, I just think Dory, Ben Murdoch, Mustilla, etc. These guys probably have a little bit more value than Ray Stone right now. Come, come, ben, come ben, around. Ben, to- ben Murdoch, Mustilla is maybe debatable. Um, <laughs> look, if he if he gets forty minutes, he'll score fifty points. If Ray Stone gets forty minutes, he's in my team. But at the moment, I just, I want to. Uh, great thing about Super Coach is we get two weeks to have a look. Yeah. And I'd yeah. say 40 yeah. minutes with any confidence. No, That's not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel with two RF cheapies, but there are a few. Uh, Brennan Pierre Cora looks like he's picked up a finally picked up some game time. We've been waiting for this for a couple of years uh, with you know the suspension yeah. of TC Ribardi. Uh, yeah, he's got a bench spot. Yeah, he looks like he's secured maybe a, a spot in their top 17. And the weird, he what makes him an interesting um. Option for me is that I reckon he's better than um, Jordan Ricky. Ooh, uh, I think it depends on what you want. I think Ricky is the kind of he guy sucks. that could improve. Ricky sucks, man. Oh. He's not first grade standard. Hey, Pre- I'm Pre- sorry. Preston, uh, Preston Ricky looking really good in the in the chat. Yeah, he, his brother looked better. He, Jordan Ricky is an absolute liability. Eighty percent of a game, he isn't. He, and he's he's like a not as good for feeder. Get him out of the bloody team and Tee get off. Brandon Piacora in there. Ask any Broncos fans if they prefer Piacora or Jordan Ricky. So Ado's getting spicy. I'm, I'm very I'm, far out. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't realize. I didn't realize you felt so strongly about Jordan Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Oh man, I am. I reckon he's a rubbish footballer. He's good looking though. Yes, I mean, he's in the misses team. Um, 234,800. He's 1.3% ownership. Um, it was an average of 13. He's only played one game last year, 23 minutes. Um, I'm projecting him for 34. So we're sort of in the same sort of ballpark, aren't we for Ray Stone? But what I think about Pia is, um, he's, he's a talent, I reckon. And he's a has, has the ability to pick up more minutes as the season goes on. Yeah. He looks a way better fuller footballer than, t- than Ricky to me. Um, and he could be, you could, I reckon he looks better as a downgrade option when he takes an if I said, when slash if he takes the second row starting, I guarantee I'm, I'm going to go the big call here that by round 10, Brendan Piacora will start at second row for the Bron- Brisbane Broncos. Bang, bang. Ricky will be out. I mean, I'm happy to put a, f- not a hundred, 50. <laughs> 50 all, right, all right, sure. We'll, Add we'll, it to the we'll, bets. We'll, I reckon, we'll do that. Uh, look, if you took Piacora, he is in the 17. You could go Adam Ariota. You could go Ber- Ben Murdoch, Masilla. I mean, he's probably a safer bet because he looks like he could even start second row forward for them. But I would have a look at Piacora as a downgrade option when he and if he eventually takes that second row spot. Um, look, it's not going to be bi- – and that's why I wouldn't start with him because it's not going to be a big minutes to start. It's not going to be big points to start. Um, and he's only had two total NRL games. So you're guessing a little bit how he's going to be used for the Broncos with a coach like Gavi. Um, I'd just wait and just keep an eye. Have, put him in your watch list at the very minimum. Do it for Ado the- because <laughs> – Oh, uh, you know, you may like Ricky, but you're getting I don't like Ricky. Into, I just, you're I just think into his good looks and his beautiful smile. I just think he's fine. <laughs> nah, he's shit. <laughs> the last player we're going to touch on today, Sean Bloor, two hundred and thirty four k, same price as Ricky, but as Ricky, same price as Pierre Cora, but he's twelve percent or twelve times more owned at twelve percent ownership. Uh, yep. Last year he averaged a huge zero point zero. So in two thousand twenty one, he averaged thirty. Um, but this year, I've got him projected at 32. So very similar to Pierre Cora, very similar to Stone. Um, buys in round 7, 13, 19 in draft. I have him as undrafted. I've got no pros, no cons, because I really don't really know what to say about him. We're picking him based off potential. We're picking him based off that one game where he leveled up with uh, Nathan Brown a couple of years ago. But, you know, very, very limited footy. 
Uh, who That's the hard thing about um, Sean Bloor yeah. and Pia Cora because, and even Ray Stone to an extent. It's why you said you prefer Ben Murdoch or Silla because in a shit team like St. George, they feel it looks like they're going to be using and this is, and, and, and PMM for 40 plus minutes. I will make note, we, we put the list together. We put the list together about five days ago and did the research for it over that last five days. Um, since then, obviously, Sean Lane's suspected broken jaw. Matt Dory looked really good in the trial. I would take Matt Dory over Pia Cora and Bloor looks to be starting yep. on an edge. Uh, yep. we, don't, we don't have notes on him, but before anyone comes out and says, oh, where's Matt Dory? Um, yeah, Matt Dory is ranked ahead of Pia Cora and Bloor and Stone. Um, starting edge yep. back row of Parramatta. Uh, should be in your team. Must have. Um, a couple of ones to consider before we finish up. You wanted to mention Eli Katoa. Um, yeah. Uh, well, look, he's 411,000, which is bargain. Um, I've been projecting him for a 51.6. It could be higher depending on the minutes or how much he improves. He looks really trim. I wouldn't. The trimmest I've ever seen him. I wouldn't pick both uh, Trent and Ellie. Uh, and I'd lean, pick, I'd, lean, I'd lean towards Trent personally. Yeah, I think for the value, you know, I, I reckon they'll probably average around the same. So. Really love the Nia Cora shout you've put here. Huge, oh, huge man. love for, for Nia Cora. I'm a fan of Nia Cora. 420,000. I'm projecting for a tick under 60. I just heard an interview from the coach. I like the coach of the Warriors this year. I actually even like the style of what I'm seeing from the Warriors. Do you? And they yeah. look um, a bit more exciting. And the Warriors that you like to see... Um, the, the chat is near Corey for 70 minutes. And if he gets 70 minutes, Huge. he's going to average 60 plus Pro- problem uh, is problem is Barnett, um, you know, Curran, uh, Siren, like there, there's, oh, there is there's, worries. There's, yep. And that's why I couldn't go in because I reckon they've got a beefy pack of, you know, near, near Corey might start on the edge. What the coach said was he's going to start on the edge and maybe he moves to the minute middle when they give Tohu a rest. Yeah, I don't know if I, I, don't I, don't know know if I like that. Tohu's getting a rest. I don't know if I like that. I think I just prefer to see him locked in. But 420K, I definitely think it's worth the gamble. If you wanted to go away from a Ghana, um, if you wanted to, you know, upgrade on Trent Liero, I think Nia Cora has huge upside. And our, yeah, avoid like, talent. our avoid like the plague section, which famously features Christian Welch, who is in, in, yeah. in my team. In our teams. Yeah. Um, Jack Howarth. Now, some talk that he's got some attitude issues, some injury problems um, coming through the grades. Everyone's saying he's on fire. I think this 500k a year is a fucking stitch up. Like, surely it's like 200k a year with like incredible bonuses. I just don't see them well, paying. I mean, it. if anyone is going to be on 500 a year and in, in any team where it doesn't matter if you're on 500 a year, it's the Melbourne Storm because Bellamy does not give a fuck. No, he, if, I, yeah. you're, if he likes you as a player, like a lawyer, you'll get the run. He doesn't care. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he's injured. He's coming through the, the grades. Um, you know, the Stormers have had massive issues at centre and Howarth, you know, is not getting named in squads, so shouldn't be in your teams. you got Burbo as an avoid like the plague. Talk to me about Burbo because he's looked really good in the trials. Are you just worried I about think, the minutes? Well, I mean, yeah. Once you get everyone back into the team, um, what's he going to get? He's going he's well, gonna to probably... We didn't, do you think he's probably going to jag a spot in that 17? Well, we, we didn't talk about him today, but Kelmatua Luggy he looked, <laughs> looked oh, really good. Really good. I mean, he looked as damaging as Hamoli. Uh, and Hamole scored 58 points, and I don't think he did a, a fucking thing. So, like, that's promising signs for him as well, who we didn't talk oh, about today either. That looked like a really good second row pairing too. He just, I'm like, was Kelmer got over his um, injured every every game and going off, you know. Um, he looked really good. And Manly looks really good. Are we going to see the return of Coach of the Year, Siebes? I oh, don't know. This man, um, this man will win us a premiership. Put him yeah, back on the front page. Get the newspaper article out of the... Uh, in the Manly press. Um, look, Burbo to me is not going to get enough minutes, but I will say this. I agree with you. In the trials, he looks like he has gotten better, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I like to Bigger body. Um, he looks like he's a bit more damaging. He looks more like Jake to me than he does um, t- Turbo. Uh, I just um, I just wish he was a little bit cheaper. Uh, he's 426K. I just wish yeah. he was a similar price to Trent at yeah, sort of so 380. Don't go him, honestly. I mean, at that price, you can grab yourself... Loero is going to score your 60 year game. Um, and and Egan Butcher, who you love. Egan Butcher, who you love. Um, oh, he is, he's yeah. a little bit cheaper. Egan I mean, Butcher. These guys are going to score 40 points more than Burbo. So get him out of your team. Oh, guys. sorry. I thought we were talking about Kenwood to a luggy still. Oh, yeah. Well, no, we're talking. I'm talking Burbo. Oh, yeah, no, I'm off Burbo. Uh, and yeah, the last Burbo's one, not enough point. Not enough minutes, not enough points. The last one um, holds a special place in my heart because uh, when I wrapped up last year, Obviously, the Instagram page went quiet for a bit, and the first pl- the first player profile I made was on Tarek Sims, and I was very much anti Tarek Sims. Um, he is at five percent ownership. I can't believe <laughs> that. I, I just went down when I was looking at some avoid the. Pl- I mean, obviously Howarth at twenty nine. You just look. You just look at ownerships run. that don't match Herbo up. At Ten. 
How is Sims 5%? Jesus. Even even 0.5% is too high. I can't believe at 5% when you've got players who are going to be good, who are at like 1%. What do people think that Tarek, he's got a calf injury. He's got an old man injury now. Look, I don't think this, I think Sims is an astute buy. It is a good buy, for, but he's in this sort of category of your Josh Papali and your Wade Graham. It's low minutes. It's going to be used because they're very skinny on middles. I reckon he's going to be used in the middle for 40 minutes a game. 5% percent should be 05 and then we can tell those 0.5 that they're making a mistake. Uh, uh, yeah, don't have if, Sims at 5%. If Sims goes from 5 to 0.5, I will then tell the 0.5 that he's still he's still too highly on. Silly, you 0.5. It feels outrageous to be telling 5% of players to get rid of Sims out of their team. He's yeah. not even going to be there for round 1. Exactly. Get rid of him. The footy feeling is in the air. We are very very close to uh, round 1 kickoffs. Um, just a little bit of an update on the podcast moving forward. Obviously, we're going through the positions. Um, Hooker and 5 8, Ado and I found that when it comes to relevancy, there isn't that many options. So, we're going to combine the halfback and 5 8 podcast together. Center wing, I expect that to be a long one, Ado. And fullback, yep. it probably isn't going to take a whole lot of time. We're going to name maybe maybe five or six names because fullback's not a position that I want to really fuck around with. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening to an hour and 15 minutes of pure waffle. YouTube listeners, sorry about my camera. Um, we'll fix that up moving forward. But just a bit of housekeeping. The Dual Position Podcast group code 988813. Prize is still undecided. Ado, what can we win in your league and what is the code? You can win a um, 100 bucks and an Ado, Adrianosaurus, um, Polo, 508-684. Get in there, lads and ladettes. It should be fun. See if you can beat Ado in Supercoach. And you can just send me abuse if you need to. I'm better than you at Supercoach. A lot of people love to send those. And I'm like, all right, you are. Thanks. And as you guys know, this podcast is sponsored by Bet with Joel, Australia's most trusted and best sports investment firm. Uh, plenty of codes for you guys to use. And Joel and his team have put up a phenomenal prize for the SE Whisperer Group. The code for that is 161930. First prize is one big player club membership where many, many clients have had portfolios that have changed their lives. That's valued at just under 4000 bucks. four bags of sand. You've been listening to the Dual Position Podcast. I have been the SE Whisperer, coach of the Ramsey Rehabilitations this year. Ado, have you got a team name yet, my friend? I think I'm sticking with Rapanorama. Ah, uh, um, boring. This year. I couldn't... Oh, well, I mean... Well, you're the same name as you were last year. I was the Ramsey Resurgence. Now I'm the Ramsey Rehabilitation because oh, okay. we, we want him Rep- back. Well, I mean, Rapana's starting in fullback. I feel like oh. I should celebrate that. Very much so. I've seen him in a few... T- someone comment on a team. If, oh, give me a Raiders theme. Like, I'd love to tap that for Tappany. What about that? <laughs> All right, guys. We will be back in... I'd love in- to tap that. Oh, we'll be back in a couple of days with the Halfback and 5-8 uh, podcast combined. Um, I've been the SC Whisperer, joined by Adrianosaurus. Mate, thank you very much. No worries. Love you all. Bye.